Sorry, perhaps you'll allow me to begin on his behalf. You see, before you, ladies and gentlemen, a young man who has everything success can buy. His clothes are the very best, his tailor is in Jeremy Street, his shoes are handmade to fit in the finest car feather. And outside his four bedroom detached home stands his Mercedes, gleaming in the sunlight. Oliver is a young man, envied by many, and he has reached the pinnacle of his career and is already heading for an early and luxurious retirement before he's 50. Why then does he appear angry and miserable? Confirm us, Oliver. Tell us the secrets of your success. It wasn't always like this. In the beginning, when I was a boy, we had nothing. My father was unemployed and on benefits, which was third to the local pub as soon as they were paid into his post office account. My mother was an early morning cleaner who kept the household together on a meagre pay packet. The four of us lived in a one-bedroom flat. I shared in a bed with my old brother until I was 11. All my clothes were hand-me-downs for my brother, and they were third-hand when he got them. And I vowed from an early age that I'd work and I'd work and I'd be a success. And if I ever had children, they'd have everything money could buy. Lady, we're proud of you, Ollie. This school course is excellent. And the teachers that you examined yourself were really good too. This proves how hard you've worked and studied. Thanks, Mum. I like school work. I've been thinking about what I'd like to do when I'm older. I'd like to be a doctor. Oh, Ollie, you know we can't afford that right now. As soon as you finish school, you're going to have to get a job. You can't afford any unnecessary expenses. But I decided there and then that nothing would stop me. I worked my way through uni and then medical school at one of the country's top hospitals. <coughs> and when I graduated, it became Dr. Oliver Lamb. I truly believed that I'd reached my goal. My dream to practice medicine had been achieved. I could sit back, relax, and enjoy my status helping the sick. In those days, the salary of a junior doctor wasn't very large. And I still felt responsible for helping my mother. Who hey, now split from my alcoholic father, and was unable to continue working due to her own health problems. My brother was unemployed and lived with his girlfriend and their two children, so he wasn't able to help. So it was up to me. And it was about that time that I met with, uh, with Juliet from the university days. Now, Juliet's degree had been in history and politics, and she was going into teaching and education, but she looked unlike any teacher I'd ever seen. That's what I did. I liked what I saw, handed in my notice, didn't give medicine a second thought. I was likeable, respected, admired, very successful. I had a string of girlfriends some may call trophies, but no wife. Plenty of time to settle down. Life's good. Well, life was good, but gradually the money and the lifestyle it all became less important. How many foreign holidays can you have? How many Lamborghini can you drive? I was cool, but I didn't listen. I think God may be calling me again, and giving me a second chance. No, listen this time. I won't let him down again. I feel as if a great weight has been lifted off me. Thank you, Peter. <coughs> Helping me to see the way forward. Not too sure how I got here. 
why any of us are here really. But I'm certainly glad I came. A clever man like you should see. You're here because God called you. He called all of you. Gave you the privilege of your vocation, your special talent. Everyone's gift is unique to them. It doesn't have to be big or important. Often, the little way is more successful. Go on your way now, Lord. Secure a moment. 